Hello and welcome to the Womb Centered Healing Podcast. I'm Sama Morningstar. I have Sean Ching here with me. Thank you for joining us, Sean. Jo- uh, Sean uh, is offered to um, contribute some of her womb artwork to the Biomystical Womb Oracle Card Deck Project, which is a collaborative project with various artists that are contributing their artwork. So thank you for coming on the call, uh, the this podcast episode and sharing about that. So Sean, please introduce yourself more and share about your womb-centered healing process through womb art. I'd love to hear about it. Okay, so I'm Sean. <laughs> nice to see everyone here. Good morning from Malaysia. It's about eight something. <laughs> And I'm actually a certified yoga instructor. And I always believe that movement helps a lot. And I didn't start from the womb art. I started from the stone art. It's what we so-called the pebble art. And something I mean that come, came to me that would be like, I use different shapes of pebbles with different texture or maybe with Maybe it shows the flaws I mean, of the stone. And I realized something, my heart is like a stone. It was like a stone. Yeah. And then my whole body was stone because I was in a very bad situation uh, about 10 years ago. And I failed my marriage and I failed my career. And also I failed my health. And because of that, uh, my cancer cell came to me. Yeah. I can say it was very unfortunate, but it's a very good opportunity for me to explore myself again. And I was thinking, I mean, I lost something and then I found something. But as a matter of fact, I was in transition and I have been in transition. It's like shifting the energy from one form to the other. Therefore, I started with the stone art that I say like this, and I drew so many stones drew so many and then people just share, I mean, how they wanted me to imitate. You know, sometimes when you imitate someone, you feel guilty because you imitate, right? It's not you, it's not the true of you. So as you are really, as you really found who you are in different stages, at different stages, you found that, oh, this is a new you. So you will realize something can be can be created. It's like a space, you know? It's like a space that you could expand. It's like the art I mean, behind me. It's actually the what we so call the crayon art. And I place the crayon in mandala form and then I just mount it with a dryer, the industrial dryer. And then I find that my womb art shouldn't be, okay, it doesn't have to be like the shape of the womb. It doesn't have to be like the shape of the Yoni, I mean, this is the Yoni art that I've made like this. Okay, so it doesn't have to be such. Most importantly, it, it has a room. So it has a space that I didn't realize it was the womb taking me places, but I realized that I needed to move because through movement, and I found another new me. So I started a war art. It means the kinetic kinetic war dance. So it looks so sensual and sexual because the movement, you gotta, you know, you gotta exercise and activate it. I mean the spine and then to to allow all the chakras to be activated. It's like Kundalini. And I found something here. It is an education. This education is telling me how I develop my vision because I empower my vestibular system. The left and right for the feminine on the left and the masculine on the right. And at the same time, it awakens the proprioceptive system. It's like how I connect my energy with my consciousness. It's a connectivity. So slowly I found that I could slow down my mind. It means I could silence my mind. So there are lots of imagination coming to me. So this imagination is like visualization. I I visualized everything. It's like I was in a cosmic form. 
So I started to use air dry clay, different kinds of, you know, different forms of art material. Majority are from nature. And another message that I would like to deliver to people that would be in nature, we see us. And I may say there is a nature in us. There is a universe in us. And especially there is a womb in everyone, not just in women. And it's actually in a man because it tells us how we can actually learn the self healing process. Maybe the way self healing doesn't mean that it should be with the womb art, draw the womb. It can be the way that I, that we talk. It can be the way that we act, respond. It can be the way that we think, you know, so it can be many ways. It's like what we so call the behavioral art in life. So it's like treating myself as a walking art. So it's like an encyclopedia, wherever I go, I see myself. I connect it to me, myself meet with the nature. So it's like I am putting myself back home. Until this late, uh, these two years, I started to engage myself into, I think four years. I started myself with the Zentangle art. So you can see the Zentangle art, the line, and uh, I'm using, I, I think I used the uh, calligraphy, calligraphy um, brush. I don't use pencil because the texture would be different. The friction would be different. So what I have practiced, gentleness. Another important message is, if I really want to be in shift, I need to surrender. If I want to surrender, I need to be gentle. If I'm not gentle enough, even if I strike on the singing bowl, it doesn't sound right. It doesn't reach to the frequency that I wish. It's like a little girl, how I wish upon the star, I want my dream to come true. Within these two years after joining the yoga training, I have been a yoga teacher. Throughout this period, and I realized something very important to me, do I really go home, go back to the home of heart? And I consider I have to be like myself and I have to be the true me. So I started doing a lot of projects which is related to um, the feminine energy, especially awakening the divine feminine energy. So I explored and I, I, I surrender. I always unlearn. And slowly I engage my art into different forms, especially eyes. I can show you this. It's actually one of them. Okay. I didn't start with womb. I started with one eye. So the third eye actually is connected with our mind and our mind and our heart are actually lovers. And they can argue all the time. They can, you know, they can be in love sweetly. And most importantly, is our heart always sweet enough to share the inner bliss with us? Whenever we feel emotionally affected and that tells us you're not at the right place so you should take your, your your heart back to the home whenever i meditate before i i have all my room up and i would i would have a prayer to myself and i chant my mantra and i calm myself down and i have to learn how to purify the womb space so that i know this actually can vibrate and when i tune my frequency higher then I started my womb up and it's like a ritual and it's like part of the life and it's like part of the routine in me. So I cultivated it and I have cultivated it I mean, for quite some time, for about four to five years. And I started the feminine work within this two years and I've manifested it and it works so well. Mm. And the value is increasing in me, most importantly. And I felt so low self-esteem after the divorce. And especially in relationship, I found that I really want to thank 
people who came to my life, whosoever, yeah? And they exist in my life to help me to reconsolidate myself, to rebuild my realm inside me. And I, I can see happiness is that it's an inside job. So I found that the room in my in the, the room and the space in my womb, whenever I have fear there, I will think and find out what's wrong with me. And I will talk to myself. And that is the inner voice telling me and what you should do to take me to reach to the pure consciousness, the true self. Yeah. yeah. That's actually the journey. Um, like when I connected with you, I'm glad that you appreciated that. Okay, my womb up is not just the shape of the womb, but the eye. So I have so many artwork, um, which is related to only one eye, because the eye, the shape of one eye, represents the third eye, number one, and it shows the soul. You know, the soul. And another thing that would be the shape of the eye also represent yoni, the vagina. So it, it is a taboo in Malaysia to talk about this openly. I have been asking myself, Sean, why are you, I mean, drawing yoni and creating yoni art most of the time? This is actually a big question. I didn't know. I always have I don't know in my mind. And I think because I always have I don't know in my mind, and I realized one thing, and I have been on this journey, and I, I am like Alice in Wonderland. Keep discovering. And the more that I deepen my discovery, the more I, the more I deepening my creativity. So massively expand. Massively expand. I, I, I saw shapes, I saw you know, different kinds, different kinds of sacred geometry um, till I realized I started with the Tantra work and uh, Tantra work is actually some, it's, it's actually a practice which is so sacred. So people would be related to only sex, yeah? So I said to myself to reclaim the power of sexuality and the sensuality is to reclaim the power of your motherly love from your inside out, not just sex, because the frequency would be only lower. You have to tune it to the higher frequency, to allow yourself to connect with your heart. So you feel the bliss. The bliss is very important. When I feel the bliss, I know I'm having the self healing. So this is actually what I've been doing about the womb art. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. I just want to um, reflect back some of the things that you shared. Uh, and I have some questions uh, for further reflection. So mm -hmm. it sounds like you started your, your art journey mm -hmm. with these stones that you felt because you felt like you were a stone. And then you're painting these eyes, this opening. Yes, yes. To see on these stones, almost like looking into the stone. Mm. Looking, can you show it again now? Yes, looking into the stone and looking into yourself feeling like a stone. And I'm curious, at what point did you start working with other mediums and did you? feel that that corresponded with a time when you felt less like a stone? I felt I was hurt. I felt somebody hurting me. And I felt this is all about the feeling, very subconscious. And I felt, why am I such at a time? About seven to eight years ago. And I felt it's all about feeling. So because of those feelings, and that inspires lots of, and that, that's like a law of attraction that attracted me lots of ideas to come in. Telling myself, look, 
this is something solid. And this solid form can be something gaseous as well. So what do you hear from the sound in the air? How do you sense, how do you awaken your five senses? I mean, when you are in nature. So I started to I mean to listen to the bird chirping like now, and I started to listen to the sound in the nature. And I started to realize, and that calms me down. And I look at the mark, and then I dance in the mud, and I look at the water, and I dance in the water. It's like I, it's like I see the cycles, and I, I also, I also see the patterns in me. Is in shift. It's like a transition, you know, from one form to the other. It's like every time I die, I surrender to my ego, and then I rebirth again. It's because I say to myself. Do you want to learn? Are you willing to learn? Are you ready for that? That's very important. You really allow yourself not to chase time, but to create moment. And this moment, it's about how you're going to spend time with, your, with yourself differently, creatively, and instinctively. Because all of us would have the basic instinct. We react and respond. When I respond to different forms of art, maybe from the leaves, maybe the fragrance of me from the leaves, maybe the fragrance of me from the flowers, or maybe something, you know, think when you get to nature and I realize something, the death and the rebirth. Because of the death and the rebirth, I started to realize more, even more about Actually, whatever I like, it comes to me is how I attract them to, to myself. Whether I, how much fear I can store, how much capacity I have in my womb, in myself, in my heart, that I can handle it. Do I have the capability to handle it? And I started to use different forms of art, different forms of media, the color, and I created my own color as well. And I even see the changes, I mean, uh, in different forms. It's like this. I want to show you this banana leaves, yeah? So we can see banana leaves in Malaysia everywhere because it's a tropical country. So at the beginning, the banana leaves would be green fresh and it looks full form and that is the that is so-called light but i want to tell myself i want to see how it can get changes and i draw the back of the women because the back of us is actually the feminine is in the front of us is yang that's the masculine because we are facing the sun and the back is actually the moon so that's why I drew the back of a woman, yeah? Of course, when I show this art, they would say, oh my God, she's just she, she, her intention is to show that she is having the sexy art. But in me, I want to wait until it gets changed. It's like a transformative process. Until, maybe until one day, it becomes, when I grabbed it, it becomes, fragile and this is actually the vulnerability that how i embraced myself that's why i want to try and i'm a very curious person very curious because of the curiosity and i say to myself yes this is so vulnerable how you're going to carry this how you're going to carry yourself how you're going to conduct yourself even when you are very, very vulnerable. How are you going to embrace it? It's all about an embodiment, you know? Thank you and for sh sharing the, this banana leaf art. Oh my goodness, what a transformation <laughs> from these, these stones that just are gonna be that shape. Forever, yes. Right. <laughs> and that that those eyes on that stone will be gazing out and into the stone 
forever. It's like preserved in stone is what we say, right? And this, and then this transition to embracing the changeability, the decomposition that you talked about uh, by painting on the green banana leaf and then watching how it transforms as it dries out and eventually crumbles and, uh, and putting the back of the woman on there. Beautiful, beautiful exploration. Thank you so much. And so I'm curious if any other people, we have um, a group of folks that have, uh, several folks that have joined us live on the podcast. If anyone would like to, um, if anyone has any questions uh, and wants to be on the recording, speaking your question out loud, you can um, turn your video on and um, unmute yourself. This will be published publicly on my podcast and on YouTube. Um, or you can write any questions you have for Sean in the chat. Lynn, did you have a question? Yes. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Lynn. Hi. Um, my question is, how can the wound act as a portal? Mm. Talking about spirituality and, and vibration and frequency, how can we connect uh, the wound with uh, changing our consciousness? Okay, so when I talk about something sacred and that would be related to the ritual and I consider food is my first ritual, is part of it. And I'm so concerned about the food that I take, yeah? Because I always find that, yes, it gives me energy, I mean, spiritually, but my concept of living is spirituality is the basis of being grounded with food, being grounded with the way that, the, the way of living, you know, the concept living. And how am I going to sustain, sustain the vitality in me? So I have to be disciplined. And I, I am so proactive in the way that I live, like from food that I eat. Yeah, especially seeds. And I have discussed this I mean, with Sama about the seed cycling because we are still menstrual. So we need to be concerned about mm, something really, really important, which, which gives me meaning and which, which gives me the value in my life. Yeah. Okay. Number one is food. Number two is how I meditate. Meditate, um, meditation doesn't mean that you need to totally thinking nothing. Actually, meditation at the beginning, it would be chaotic in your mind. So meditation to me is, is very fun. And when I, I, I'm a nature person, I, I, when I get to the water, especially in the nature, I speak to water. I speak to the wind, I speak to the nature, I, especially I speak to water. This sounds so interesting when you speak to water, you talk to it and then you introduce yourself and then you befriend with it. Why water? Because we are women. And then we also embody, I mean, the masculine energy as well. Sometimes there is toxic masculine energy in us. We will shout, we will dominate, become so dominant. So this moment, what I think is I have to be soft and I talk to the water and I allow the water flow, flow to the river, along the river, to the sea. And then when they, when the water evaporates and then goes up and into to the sky and it rains again, it's like a cycle. Through the law of nature and I realize how I reclaim, how I reclaim the power back. Because I, I'm reading, I'm reading and I'm doing a lot of study of nature. So through the way that we speak is actually one of the senses, number one. Number two, through the way that we see is visualize. Through the way that I hear, do I listen or I hear? Through the way that I smell, do I accept this stink? 
or do I only accept the fragrance and through the way that I touched? Because the moment when I touch my, touch my art, I have to touch my body first. And I'm also a womb, womb mandala energy healer <laughs> because, because of art. And then that tells me how I, I make myself soft. Did you understand what I mean? Soft. So soft doesn't mean that we are weak. Softness means you are so gentle because the more gentle in us, the more gentle in us, the more strength we can build and consolidate because we can stay focused more easily. Yeah, it's like a lubricant and it's easier for us to understand, oh, when you are softened yourself, you vibrate. It's like you knock on the door like, I want to go in, but you don't knock, don't ask, don't request. The more that you relax, the more you vibrate. Yes? Yeah, the more you relax, the more you vibrate. The more vibrational you are, your intention and your action will become the magic and it will come to you naturally. Number one, how you surrender to your ego. Hmm. Like say for example, we might have arguments with our partner. We might have, you know, lots of setback. And do we really want to accept that situation? Once I learn how to accept it, so it's easier for me to rise up my frequency again. So I tune my frequency by using the singing bowl. Here we go, the singing bowl. And I have a frequency, in, yeah, I have a frequency, you know, amplifier in front of me. If I strap the singing bowl, when I try to play, if it doesn't sound so right, that means it is in me. Because that is something external. I should keep myself highly vibrational. Not only, I mean, I, I want to create more art. Yeah, it's like last year, I said to myself, I have to draw, I wanted to draw 100 pieces of only one third eye to distribute to every participant who came to my women's circle. I targeted it and I made it. And I'm so happy that I made it. Yeah, I'm happy that I made it. So until year 2020, and I stopped everything. Until lately, I said to myself, it's time for me to stop for a while. Maybe I had another discovery at the beginning of the year. I didn't even draw an eye. So I find that the frequency is not there. It doesn't vibrate with only one eye. Until lately, and in my meditation, I... I, I connected with some deities and then when I connected with some deities and then I started to tell myself timing is right for me to engage in my artwork again and I engage in an artwork of Kali. So I find that, okay, Kali, and then I have another new discovery. So what am I going to do is I got to find out I mean, who Kali is, what is the background of Kali, you know, what is the background of the story behind Shiva, Kali. So I'm, I'm a free thinker, but I connected them with them is because I, I, I am at, I mean, the cosmic situation and then the state. So I find myself, oh my God, I'm in Alice. I'm like Alice in Wonderland again. Always keep this fantasy in you so that you, you will know how, how spacious and how expansive, I mean, your, 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 creativ your creativity can go. It takes you places. Mm. And as a matter of fact, to keep this vibration to be, to be in tune, and I have cried so many times. I have cried so many times because I knew that when I cried and I checked, I checked myself. Very interesting. So because I'm in the energy work, especially the divine feminine energy work, I realized one thing here, the left side of our eye, when a tear drops, that's the feminine one. 
and the right side is the masculine. And the, the, the warmth of the tears when it roll down, and if it is not that hot and warm, yeah? And that means that is the spiritual feeling, especially from the right side, and then I have that tear rolling down. And when I feel it is cold, so that means I touch my heart, I touch my inner man. I touch the heart of my inner man. This is actually how I manifest it. And when the tears rolling down, when they are so warm, that means I have to, it's the moment for me to embrace my vulnerability. So when I talk about vibration, it doesn't mean that you shake so you see the vibration. As a matter of fact, even when I speak, you think you are the you are the reception and then to receive what I say, it's also a vibration as well. It's also the frequency as well. So warm up is a representative, it's like a stone, it's solid. It can be gaseous, it can be, you know, from the heat, from the sound that we hear, it's all about vibration. It depends on the mean what you think. Yeah? Okay, you can, we can see a lot of people, they have they draw the yoni. And then they draw the, the womb art and that represents yoni. As a matter of fact, when you see your ego is, is there, exists, that means, do you still want to be angry like that? Suppressed as such? And it's also another kind of vibration. Because energy, we don't want to use the word like positive or negative. Energy is energy. It's only preferable or unpreferable in me, in my concept. If I keep saying I just want to be positive, positive, and positive, if I can't be positive, that means I collapsed. Yeah, I, I have collapsed. So the moment when I face collapsed and I knew that, yeah, that's the awareness. I have to be aware of it. How am I going to cope with myself? So, do you think you can be alone? When you are alone, when you find the inner joy, when you find the inner peace, that means you already go back to the home of heart. And I want to show this again. That's and when you look at the eye, when you look at the heart, womb is the second heart of a mom. And we have the inner womb in ourselves, not just for the woman. And it's also for the man as well, because we are all human beings. And this heart has an eye. It tells you how you are going to look inward. So that's why I related one eye and the shape of it is actually a symbol of the yoni as well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you for such mm. rich sharing. Uh, does anyone else have any questions for Sean? Yes, I do. Uh, First and foremost, uh, Sama, thank you for hosting this. Thank you very so much. Welcome. And uh, Sean, thank you for sharing your story, your inspiration, your highs and lows, and your passion. You know, your passion is amazing. Thank you. I have a question. Now, you mentioned the womb. A man or a man can also connect with the womb. Yeah. So what is the womb for a man? And how does he connect with that womb? Thank you. Okay, so to connect this, I mean, to connect a womb, I mean, it's like an installation, it's like an app. So once you install this in you, then you feel like your feminine energy. Because in a man, there is the feminine energy, the divine feminine energy as well, not just divine masculine energy. Likewise, for women, we have the divine masculine energy as well. So this moment, how men connected this womb is actually is a kind of desire. 
it's a kind of desire for you to know how you can get back to the to the home of heart as well as i say i do not want to put a womb in a man that sounds not logic but i put i mean a heart in you so in us we have the inner man in man there is the inner woman it doesn't mean that when you turn to be like you are having a womb, you are a woman. It's just that how you're going to conduct yourself in a gentle way as well. Yeah, because gentle, gentleness always takes place, especially the moment when you want someone to do something, you request something. Is that possible to happen? It's like, I was curious if I could connect with Sama Morning Star. I, I was curious about that. And I said to myself, I think I could. And I tried. And I did it. And as for men, like the womb, and it's like, as I say, you surrender to your ego. You surrender to your ego and then you let the new idea to, to be rebirthed. It's like rebirthing the new life. Rebirthing doesn't mean that you are having a baby because you can't. Yeah? But rebirthing the new life, it can be an idea. It can be something that a project that you are going to engage. It can be a relationship that you are going to, you know, you're, you're seeing someone so that it's easier for you to know that this womb has a meaning in our life. And it's like the papaya tree. So it's very interesting in America. I don't know if there is papaya tree. So papaya tree is a kind of tree only the mother, only the female papaya tree can, can fruit, can be harvested. But the male papaya tree cannot be harvested. Sounds so interesting, right? Even you plant the seed, if it grows, it is a male form, it doesn't work. So you have to chop it off. <laughs> you, 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 gotta, you gotta build it. You gotta build it. You gotta you gotta see. I mean, whether it fruits or not, because when the seed grows, and then you don't know whether it is a a, a woman papaya tree or a man papaya tree. You don't know. You have no idea. But I only believe. I believe. Uh, this is a strong belief. Imagination is a free will. It's like I say, the man possess a man possesses a womb inside. It's a free will. Once we exercise the free will. The more imagination that you have, that means you already open your heart, you visualize the new idea insightfully, insightfully. Yeah? So it's easier for you to unlock because you choose to unlock and you're ready to unlock. So the womb, that means it's like you're going back to your mom's and how your mom nurtures you, how your mom cultivates you, how your mom mothers you. And there is a meaning here. I believe everyone wants love. And the womb is a space for us to feel the power of self-healing, number one, the power of creativity and liberation. And always when we surrender, that means we are forgiving ourselves. You choose to forgive, you choose to have the fundamental liberation. Have I answered your question, Mr. Murali? <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, <laughs> thank you. you know, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Uh, it's just so wonderful to hear all of your stories and to see your beautiful artwork in this it's very sensory uh all these connections um are sort of re rewiring uh my experiences just listening to you make all these connections that give us um a new way of seeing things through a through a different set of eyes and i just wanted to mention a couple of things um, that, as you said, the back of the body is the feminine side of the body. And just like we have the 
the masculine third eye here, we also have the feminine third eye right at the base of the skull, which is an, a more powerful, I don't know about more powerful, but it's a very powerful uh, place because it's the place, the only place where our spinal cord is not fully encased by bone. Mm -hmm. So it's the one place where uh, we can receive direct sensory information. And it's ironically a place where a lot of people have a lot of tension to protect and a lot of trauma uh, mm -hmm. to protect that place because it is so vulnerable there. Um, yeah. So your, your eye paintings, especially when you're putting the eye in the heart and the eye in the womb, um, evokes that vulnerability for me and especially when you're associating the shape of the eye with the shape of the of the yoni or the vagina um, it evokes that connection and this place also helps to connect the mind with the womb yes. and the heart because there's a there's a nerve that goes directly from the womb directly into the brain the womb has a a very direct relationship with the mind too. And I'm curious, you said that the mind and the heart are lovers. And I'm curious how you feel about the womb and the mind also being lovers of some sort. Mm. Oh, so really when I say the heart, and a lot of people, they consider Tantra. When I, when I start the word of Tantra, um, there is a misconception I mean, in Tantra. And then they only think about sex so when i when i say when i engage this work and i gotta ask myself the heart and the mind are lovers and always i want to see whether the bliss exists or not exist or not yeah so i started to I mean to draw to to draw i mean a single eye and this is from my mind and and my Am I feeling blissful? Am I feeling comfortable with myself? And then this is actually connected. This is actually a connectivity. If the mind and the, and, and the heart are not connected, and it shows the conflicts all the time. When conflicts happens, and then we don't feel comfortable with our own physically, emotionally, psychologically, and spiritually. So the mind and the heart should always comes together and communicate. And it's like you're telling story to each other. How you're going to share the vibes? How you're going to share the ups and downs together? It's like lovers. How sweet I mean they can be with together. How they get along with each other. When they fight, you feel not right. When they don't fight, when they are sweetly in love, and then they feel comfortable, they feel blissful, they feel so romantic. I just want to use the word like the mind and the heart can write the whole story of you. Yeah. And even the man. But some men, majority of the men, they are so practical. Practical in the way that they think, oh, okay, please use your mind. And in Malaysia, and then we have a word like, please use your brain, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, I think. Always the mind is actually on top, the heart is second, and the top of it is actually from the sky, and we receive something like the light or the message from, me from the top. But we should stay tuned with our heart. Is this what the heart wants? Is this really the heart wants to receive what the universe gives you? And I also connect the mind to the universe as well. And also connect my heart I mean, to the ground as well. It should be interrelated, not just the mind and the heart. Because I'm like an instrument to be sent by the universe to the earth to be part of it, to complete my mission. So I got to learn about how steady I can be. How am I going to Bore on the ship to be in this relationship, the heart and the mind. If I can conduct myself so well, especially as a lover, 
in me. So that means I can get along. But we age, we mature. It really depends on the incidents that happen in us, the events happen in us, especially the, the life story. Actually, everyone's childhood is different. Yeah, okay. Because of the differences and we, oh, I open my eye, I reopen my eye again. But no matter how I reopen, and I always believe in one thing, my heart tells me, Sean, you came alone. Someday, sometime, you will go alone. How you're going to connect them in a very loving way? How you're going to make yourself to be more aware of, number one, your need. Number two, your want, your desire. How you're going to balance them. It's all about the harmony and balance within. So this is about the, the mind and the heart. Mm. But mm. beautiful. I, I would I would also add that perhaps the womb has something to teach the mind and the heart about being sweet lovers. And all the words that you were sharing about that, the harmony and the connection with the earth and being a portal from the sky to the earth, all of those things are qualities of the womb. Yes. And that soft sweetness. And so uh, perhaps a, a way to find that sweetness when the mind and the heart are fighting is to consult with the womb and mm. ask the womb to guide that healing process and to remind us how to be good lovers with ourselves. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. And thank you, Sean, for showing your artwork and sharing your wisdom with us. Um, if someone wanted to get in touch with you to learn more about your work, Sean, where would they go? Uh, next. We are having the session, the womb mandala energy dance session with Summer Morning Star. Yep, at three, right? Three to five in the Pacific at the Pacific time. Right. Yeah, yeah but I'm t I'm asking, um, do you have a website that people can find out about your work? Yes, from Facebook. Okay, so Sean Ching Cheng. Cheng. At, on Facebook. They can yeah. find you there. Okay, and then if you follow Sean, and if you're also following um, the Womb Centered Healing Temple, if, you're, if you get on the, go to the website and sign up for the newsletter, then you'll have announcements about future events like the one that Sean just described. So thank you all uh, for joining us. And um, that's all for now. Until next time.